kidding, humans? They're showing a Halloween episode in November! Happy Halloween! I'm sure everyone's got their own Halloween traditions. Some eat candy, others go to parties, some watch horror movies, but for me, it's time for The Simpsons, with their Treehouse of Horror episodes. Releasing every year for the past three years or so is one hell of an accomplishment. But there are some actually really solid ones out there. You got your classics, your underrated, and some genuine gems in the newest series. There's also a lot of garbage, and I mean a lot of garbage, but that's neither here nor there. If you've been a long time viewer, you have noticed I've done this sort of thing ago two years ago, reviewing them all in 10 words or less. Not only has there been a new episode since then, but also didn't even review Halloween of Horror, any of the intros, or even the entire episode in its entirety. So tonight's ranking is going to be somewhat unique and calls for a different kind of system, a tier list. I'm sure you all know how these work, ranking them from best to worst, from S tier to F tier. With well over 100 segments, that is a lot to cover, so I'll keep the summary pretty brief and rank them accordingly. This will not only include every segment, but also Thanksgiving of Horror, given how it follows the same parody and horror angle, Halloween of Horror as its Halloween base, and unless I can find Treehouse Rule 34 today, I won't include it on the list. Hey, uh, so editing Jeff here, I just want to say that because this took a long time to edit and get all the footage together, this ended up taking way longer than I thought, and because Trias of Horror 34 already came out by this time, I decided to include it on the list. And also, just to make your lives a whole lot easier, and you can see which segments I end up where, I'm gonna put a timestamp for every single segment on here, just so you can keep up. Anyways, keep enjoying the video. And I'll have a separate tier list going over the collections of the series as a whole. But that's all I have to say, so let's get going! To start us off, let's go through something I like to call the Golden Age. The segments you automatically think of when it comes to these episodes, numbers 1 through 7. Often considered the best of the series, and which is funny considering it's also at the beginning. So, prepare yourself for a whole bunch of quality. So let's start off with Bad Dream House, a parody of Poltergeist. So, I feel like it should be a good time to say, out of all these, I've only seen like maybe 10, 20 of what they're all entirely based on, so you're gonna have to forgive me if I'm a bit of a horror failure. But anyways, Bad Dream House, a really solid entry in the series and a good start. I like all the jokes and from what I've seen, it is a really solid interpretation of Poltergeist, almost like they just strip them out and put them in the movie. Overall, I'm gonna give it an A. Next one, Hungry Are the Damned. Hunger of the Damned is based off a Twilight Zone episode, a very, very common thing throughout the series as a whole. I'd say it's pretty good as a solid start and a really good introduction to Kang and Kodos. I feel like the ending is maybe a little bit forced, I saw it coming a mile away, but overall I can't really complain about it it had some really solid jokes in there, also A tier. And finally for Trios Horror 1, we have The Raven. A really solid retelling of Edgar Allan Poe's poem, and I gotta say, it's kind of weird how this is probably the few times I actually did this, and even this is the only time it's done in the style of the original poem. I will say, looking at it through a critical angle, it can't really compare it to all the other episodes because it's more so just reading out a poem rather than telling its own story. But overall, I could definitely see why it has a bit of a cult following. Also, A tier. Yeah. That just feels right. As for the whole entirety of the episode itself, I'd say this is really solid start to the series. All of them have really good chemistry, all have good Joe, and they all blend into the horror angle really well. Also a really solid episode. I give it all perhaps an 8 out of 10. Probably not Also, no, I'm not gonna do ranking out of 10 for all of them. That'll just be too nuts. All right, next up, the monkey's paw. First one of Treehouse of Horror 2. This one, I would say, is also really solid. A lot of the jokes are pretty funny. I wouldn't exactly say it's scary, much less compared to the other ones, but I'd still say it's really good in what it does. I'd give it A tier. Actually, I'm gonna put Raven right in front of Bad Dream House, yeah. That just seems right. Next up, The Bart Zone. This one I actually really enjoy personally. It's another Twilight Zone one, and I think it works well with the, with the whole theme of Twilight Zone, as well as its own horror thing. I'm gonna give it S tier, actually. 
I really like the jokes, I really like the setup, and all the different twists and turns it takes is really good. I like it a lot. Yeah, this is gonna be a bit of a cardinal sin, but I'm not really a big fan if I only had a brain. It kind of starts off really average and predictable, Hover's lazy at work, oh he gets fired, but then with the whole robot angle, it's an interesting Frankenstein parody, but then they just do the same joke again. And the twist at the end with Mr. Burns being attached to him, it's okay, it's there. I don't know what else to say, but honestly, C tier. Now overall, ranking the entire episode together, I like the whole angle that they're all experiencing nightmares. Honestly, I'm also going to give it an A. While If I Only Had a Brain didn't really do it for me, this is still a really solid collection. I really like the first two episodes. But yeah, it's definitely below the first Halloween special. But now, let's get into what a lot of people consider their all-time favorites, starting with Trios of Horror 3, A Clown Without Pity. Really good, terrifying segment, based on another Twilight Zone episode. God, I'm gonna have to edit out a lot of stuttering and mispronunciations in this one. But yeah, this one is actually really solid, with a lot of good jokes, a good genuine sense of horror, and frankly, I don't think I could ever forget this one. I give it... I don't like... Yeah, again, A tier. Probably the uh, Hunger are the damn. Yeah. Up next, King Homer. This one I haven't really seen until recently, but I could definitely see this one as a cult classic. Because it follows the King Kong story surprisingly well. Well, except for the ending. But otherwise, it's also just freaking hilarious. I don't know why, but just a lot of the jokes here in this one specifically just always seem to get to me. Call me crazy. This is another S tier. Actually, above uh, Bard Zone, actually, I really like this one. Next, dial Z for Zombies. Z, because I'm a Canadian. Z for Zombies is a really solid zombie story, plain and simple. And I gotta say, I don't know why, but one of the few things I remember was this weirdly badass gun shotgun low that Homer does here. I don't know why, but that just always seems to really get me going. Overall, this is also just a really interesting one, and I don't know if this would be an Evil Dead or just standard zombie uh, homage, but regardless, I'm gonna give this another A tier. Actually, above Raven, all of them. And for the whole segment, this is actually all really good. I'm gonna actually put it in S tier. It's really solid all throughout. Up next, we have The Devil and Homer Simpson. Out of all these, this is the segment I remember the most. Probably because this is one of the few since episodes that my dad allowed me to watch as a kid. And this one right here, even though I didn't remember the plot, oh, I definitely remembered everything else. From the punishment, to the court trials, to everything in between and the ending. It was my favorite as a child, it was for a long time, and frankly, it is nowadays too. Past King Homer probably won't be topped anywhere later on the list. But anyways, let's move on to the next one. Terror at five and a half feet. Five and a half feet is a really solid Twilight Zone one, like the, all the others. And I swear, I don't know why, but the gremlin used to scare the crap out of me as a kid. Probably because just that weird look in his eyes. But nowadays, it doesn't really get me that bad. But a lot of the jokes really seem to get to me. Like Groundskeeper Willy, the gremlin that Bold Man was driving. It's all really solid stuff. I'm gonna give it an A tier. Uh, actually, yeah, sure. Right below Bart Zone. And speaking of Bart, actually, we have Bart Simpson's Dracula. Bart Simpson's Dracula is another solid one, which is following vampires. Probably another one of the classics I should think of when you think of Treehouse of Horrors. And frankly, I, I definitely see the hype, but I guess, I don't know. Just not really for me, I guess. I think... Maybe they focused on the actual Dracula part a bit more, I would be more invested. But overall, I can't really complain or deny this place is this raise, so I'm gonna go in B tier. So for this overall, this is probably one of, if not my all-time favorite, so definitely S tier. Up next, Trias of Horror 4, The Shining, or Shining. The Shining in this one is based off The Shining, which, again, haven't seen. But I feel like I could get the whole story based off this alone. With the crazed killer chasing around a hotel, freezing to death in the snow. All really iconic stuff that The Simpsons plays into perfectly. And these jokes here really got to me, honestly. One of the few times I actually laughed out loud watching The Simpsons. Honestly, 
S tier. Gonna go past King Homer. I know I put a lot of stuff in S and A tier, but don't you worry. We're gonna get to the bottom garbage soon enough. But for now, Time and Punishment. This one I wouldn't say is scary, or really even Halloween themed, more so sci-fi, but you can't deny that this is a really fun concept to go through. All different worlds, all different ways Homer messes up the future. It's all really great. But I have to really ask, who is the Brazilian that first traveled through time? I never understood that joke, and no one I've ever talked to ever has. But still, I can't deny that this is probably one of my favorites. A tier. But oh yeah, why should I say that was my favorite? This one right here, easy S tier. I didn't even have to think about it. Nightmare Cafeteria. Really chilling tales about zombie-like creatures eating them all up. All the casually obvious jokes about eating all the students. This is one's always stuck out to me in the best possible way. Up next, Attack of the 50-Foot Eyesores. A really kind of strange segment. I mean, this is coming out. This is probably something I would have expected near the later half of The Simpsons, but here at the front, I'd say it's pretty good. It's kind of all over the place when you really think about it, but I would say it's also just really funny too, with all the different jokes, all about different brands and how they move around and stuff. And that ending is probably one of my favorite endings of all time. The next Deadly commercial could be after you next. We'll be right back. B tier. And here we go, Nightmare on Evergreen Terrence. This one is also really solid, with primarily focusing on fear rather than jokes, but both of them are plenty there in spades, with Do Not Touch Willy, I mean, my all-time favorite jokes in the entire Treehouse of Horror collection. I'd say this one is a definite S tier. Actually, eh, yeah, this is good here. That old video didn't really age so well. Oh well. And finally, we have another one which didn't really appeal to me, but I could see others getting interested. Homer Cubed. The first entry into 3D, Homer Cubed is a really interesting concept and really cool showing off all the effects. But other than that, I guess it didn't really do much for me. The ending where he goes out into the real world is alright, but I don't know. This one I always considered a bit overrated in my eyes. Definitely not a C tier, not for sure. But B tier, that definitely seems good. And finally, for the last of this golden age, we have Treehouse of Horror 7. But wait, before we can do that, this video is sponsored by Treehouse of Horror 5. Which is going into B tier. No. Uh, low A tier. Yeah, low A tier sounds good. And also, speaking of which... Oh yeah, right, I almost forgot to rank Treehouse of Horror 6, too. Eh, Treehouse of Horror 6, it, I wouldn't say it's really my appeal, per se, but it also has a lot of really good ones. I would probably put it in A tier. Past 5, but bo actually, yeah, a bit past 2. Yeah, this is another really good one. And finally, let's go over the actual- Now, let's actually go over the ending of Treehouse of Horror 7. And the thing and I. The thing of I- I used to think it was a basket case thing, because it follows conjoined twins, but it's, think about it, not really. I'm not entirely sure what it's based on, but I can tell you that it's still really solid at the classic. Really playing into the body horror aspect of it, and frankly, I know that it might be a bit of a dead meme now. That dumb mirror frame joke with Dr. Hibbert always, always gets me. I don't know why. Easy A tier. Uh, right here. A tier. A tier right past Clown Without Pity. Up next, the Genesis Tube. The Genesis T- or wait no, Genesis Tub. No E. Another Twilight Zone one. And honestly, I mean, maybe it's just- maybe it's just me, but this is probably one of my least favorite of the Twilight Zone themed ones. I wouldn't say it's bad by any means, I thought it's definitely interesting, but I feel like the plot just kind of goes around in circles, and I don't feel like it's a really climactic or satisfying or even really funny ending, but still, I can't really hate it in any way. Eh, a low B tier. And finally, and finally, the one that probably just got to me, even though I know nothing of 1990s American politics, Citizen Kane. 1990-something election piece, where Kang and Kodos take the role of protagonists as, as the presidential candidates. I think it's just the fact that these old men are just walking around holding hands, 
bringing up weird conversations and twirling, twirling, twirling towards freedom. But this one is just hilarious to me in the best possible way. I'm gonna give this one solid A tier. Past time? Actually, no, not past time and punishment. But still, this is a really solid one. And as for 7 itself, I'm gonna give it... Hmm... Right in between, right in between two and two and five. Yeah, I'd say that's a really solid one, solid entry placement. And so that we have the classics, the ones that everyone thinks of when you think of classic Simpsons. Up next, we have the Bronze Age, where some of them are pretty good, but not as many bullseyes as the Golden Age. But the worst you can say about them is, meh. This segment of mediocrity will primarily go over Treehouse of Horror segments eight through fourteen. Starting with the Omega Man, which is actually a really solid entry in the series. I like the angle where Homer just does whatever he wants. The whole mutants angle is a bit over the top for my taste, but overall I can't really complain. I give it an A tier, right after Hungry the Dam. Fly vs. Fly. Not gonna lie, I had to pre-watch a couple of these segments again so I could get an idea. Not that this one's bad or anything, but just I didn't really see the appeal to it as much as the other ones on here. But overall, I'd say this one's a B tier, right between Homer Cubed and Attack of the 50 Foot Ice Storms. We have one in a collection which I would consider very much guilty pleasures of mine. Easy Bake Coven. I think it's because of the jokes about eating children, or maybe it's the whole angle about playing into the start of Halloween, but I really like Easy Bake Coven. A really solid entry into the origins of Halloween and witches in general. I give this one an A, right before Citizen Kane, yeah. So, ranking Trios of Horror number 8, I give this one... Hmm... I'd give it an A. Definitely at the bottom of the list, but still I'd rank it pretty high up. And finally, let's go over to Trading House of Horror 9, where uh, probably the best thing I can say about this was me as a dum dum. Always read this as Hell Toppy. Hell Toppy! That is probably the most entertainment I've ever gotten out of this. It's not bad per se, but I feel like it's a little bit generic, because in the end, it's just a mo common character in the show just killing people with not a whole lot to pull out to it. There's that whole angle where the hair takes control, but I feel like it's not super interesting when compared to other ideas. Honestly, high C tier. Right in between high C and low B, like lowest low B. The Terror of Tiny Toon. I feel like this one definitely had potential, but honestly this one didn't really do it for me either. I felt it was alright, but I thought that they didn't really do too much with it. Primarily because a lot of it was just, oh this is gonna happen, but no this is gonna happen, oh no this! But then it ends a bit too quickly for my taste, although the neutering joke still gets me. That was pretty funny. Uh, B tier? Yeah, I'd say B tier is a very good one. Starship Poopers. Why can't I remember this one? Well, this is a really solid start. I can't remember what the hell. Oh, oh, oh yeah. Oh, right, right. It's the one with Jerry Springer, right? Yeah, yeah, I remember now. Well, that should go for... I feel like that should be well enough said about it because I feel like if they just focused on either the Jerry Springer angle or the Maggie turning to a monster angle, I feel it would be overall better, but combining them both and with it not real and with the Jerry Springer stuff not really bringing it to a conclusion, I yeah, definitely see tier. Past the whole I had a brain. So ranking this so ranking Trias Horror 9 overall, yeah, it's a definite B. Very, like, teetering between B and C. Could probably go either way, but oh well. And now we get to the ones where I... This is honestly a hard pass. I know what you Italy did last summer. I feel like this one is kind of just okay. I feel like it just kind of falls apart near the end. There was some solid jokes about the whole about the whole suspect angle and the and the places to hide, but everything else just kind of doesn't really do it for me. And the whole ending about the werewolf, uh, that just kind of came out of nowhere and just seemed kind of cheesy. If it focused on just the werewolf thing, or just the whole I know what you did angle, I'd probably rank it higher. But for now, uh, honestly, D tier. Yeah, I didn't really like this one very much. wouldn't say it's god-awful, but I wouldn't say it's really really meh either. Desperately Zeking Xena. I'd say this one is a pretty solid uh, Halloween superhero thing. Maybe not, honestly, 
I don't think I feel good putting that in, in B tier, though. It's a decent uh, thing about uh, superheroes. Maybe it would mean a lot more if I actually watched uh, Xena. Though I do like the stuff with comic book guy, though. Honestly, eh, B. Why not? Alright, and now we have the final one for number 10. Life's a glitch, then you die. Life's a glitch, then you die is a pretty... I don't know how I feel about this. I didn't really like the... I remember not really liking the ending for the longest time. But I feel like if I definitely knew these actors, or any of them for that general, I would like it more. And frankly, if I knew more about 90s tech, maybe I would have liked it more. Or the whole scare around Y2K. But overall, eh, C, honestly. Yeah, so frankly, this one, she has a horror 10. Yeah, this is kind of the marking point of the bad kind of stuff here. I'm gonna put it, yeah, definitely C tier. Alright now, Treehouse of Horror 11. Goes dad. Did you know that the original movie that this is based on starred Bill Cosby and he died? I feel like that is pretty common knowledge, but it's just weird to think about. And frankly, it meant more to me than watching the segment altogether. I mean, I guess I found the final ending and the whole stuff about dying to broccoli of all things all right. Overall, can't really say much about this one, and not in a good light either. I'm gonna give it a C tier. Right, yeah, right prior if I only had a brain. For the middle segment, we got scary stories that can come true. I can barely read this. Why is it in... Why is it so dark? But regardless, I feel like it's a pretty interesting angle going into the fairy tales and the, and the grim realities that they all have. I think it's pretty interesting, but I feel like in execution, a couple of the jokes kind of just end too quickly. And I feel like they probably just stuck to one, like specifically Hansel and Gretel, or specifically Goldilocks, and it would be a smash hit. Overall, B tier? Probably, yeah, right here. Past de Desperately Zeking, de Past Desperately Zeking Xena. There we go. And finally, for Chiasa Horror 11, we have Night of the Dolphin. Night of the Dolphin is a, another cult classic one. I see a lot of people bring this up when it comes to the Halloween segments. But honestly, I guess I'm not one of them per se. I do like some of the brutality, and the ending is kind of funny. I guess the more I think about it, it actually is pretty funny. I don't think I would put it in A tier, though. I'd probably put it high B. Actually, right here. High B. Yeah, I'd definitely say Dracula is like the threshold. If anything's better than Dracula, it's going in A tier. So going into the actual thing, I like the Monsters parody. I've always been more of an Adams Family guy myself, but personally, I'd say this is okay. Past number 9, we go into number 12, where it kind of just goes all over the place with magic and technology. Wouldn't exactly say it's scary per se, but more so going into the weird fantasy non-canon route. And Hex in the City is a prime example of that, playing with all manner of weird curses and the iconic leprechaun. Maybe it's just I'm a horrible person, but this walking, talking Irish stereotype just cracks me up every time I look at him. The curse stuff is... I feel like if they focused more on it, it would be more impactful. Like, if they just focused on the beer growing, the neck extending, or the horse daughter. But I feel like it's overall still really solid. A tier. Past Monkey Paw and Hungry Are Damned. And this one right here, House of Wax. This is another one I, I definitely remember from my childhood. The House of Wax one, based off what I assume is a space odyssey with the AI. I do like the angle that it's obsessive over Marge and that it can control the house in all manner of crazy ways. I think it's a really solid entry, actually. Definitely the best of this weird... So of this really questionable period of The Simpsons. A tier. Past Easy Bake Coven. I'm biased. I'm nostalgia blind. Sue me. And finally for 12, we have Wiz Kids. Have you ever seen Harry Potter? If you haven't, don't worry. The writers this clearly didn't either. By just doing its own thing, just... Hey look, magic school. Woo! Spooky, spooky wizards and snakes and shit. I don't know where I was going with that. But anyways, this is a... If you have seen it, don't expect it to be a loving parody of Harry Potter, just playing around the idea of kids' magic. Yeah, B tier. I feel like it would probably benefit better if it did based off one of the books, but I feel like it would also kind of just butcher it entirely. Overall, Trias of Horror 12, I give it B tier, right in between Monsters and Nine. Now we move on to Trias of Horror 13. A bit of it, I'd say this is probably a fan favorite in this period of The Simpsons. For, starting off with Send in the Clones, 
which is primarily based on its jokes, and all of them are really funny too, with so many different examples from the army, to the killing Flanders, to the strangling yourself bit, and of course there's an iconic ending where they all just fall off to their death like little lemmings. A tier. Solid A tier. Up next, to fright the, the Fright to Creep and Scare Arms. That was... <laughs> I couldn't read that for a second there. The Fright to Creep and Scare Arms, that is a that is a very difficult to say title, is a really solid entry in the series. I wouldn't exactly say it's my personal favorite, not by a long shot. I feel like the ending and a lot of the stuff with the, with the zombie cowboy is just kind of, it seems a bit underdeveloped, and the ending just kind of just goes all over the place and not in a good way. I'd say B tier, past Wiz Kids for sure. And finally, The Island of Dr. Hibbert, which made a lot of adults realize that they're probably secretly furries, including Homer. This one is a pretty interesting case. I like to see all of the different animal hybrids between the Simpsons characters and the regular characters. I would give it... hmm... Eh, no, probably... actually, yeah. Right in between. This is probably low A tier for me. I guess it doesn't do super, super much, but I would also say that I enjoy where this, is, this segment goes. Now, ranking it all together, Treehouse of Horror number 13. I do like the bit at the opening with Maud and how she's the one reading the stories here. I give it... hmm, let's see here. And now this segment, now this is starting to get so big that we need to make some more sta space here. We need, we need for you to actually see what is going on here. Here we go, that's better. Now, let's move on to Treehouse of Horror number 14. I'd say Treehouse of Horror 14 overall, spoiler alert, it's actually a really solid one. All these I actually really liked, and for a lot of people, really good starting point. Reaper Madness, I'd probably say it's the weakest one, but don't take that the wrong way, it is also really damn good. A lot of good comedy, a lot of good action, just make sure to hold your disbelief with a lot of it. Uh, A tier. Actually, yeah, past thing without thing and I. And Frankenstein. I remember, I used to love this a lot more than I probably reasonably should. I would say this is still a really good one, but S tier? No. A tier, definitely. I put it between Citizen Kane. I do like the stuff between, uh, Ned, or not Ned Flanders. <laughs> Professor Frank and his father, and the ending, where it just kind of goes all over the place with the gore and the craziness and the blah, I should not do impressions of Simpsons characters. And finally, for number 14, and for the end of the Bronze Age, what a way to end it off and stop the world, I want to goof off. Easy, easy S tier. It is probably the funniest of all the segments out here, and it's almost no question. With all the different time stop shenanigans from basic stuff like dropping pants or sticking fingers up nose, the very complex and very hilarious bit where Homer eats all the donuts, tries to kill himself, puts a banana on his shirt, gets naked, and then accidentally is exposed to a child who also gets naked. This is it's a lot more funnier than I make it describe it, and if anyone's else has seen it, I feel like the ending is a little bit out there and a, where a little bit of the action stops for me. But overall, I can't really deny it. This is an easy, easy S tier. And, hmm, actually, yeah, yeah, Nightmare, Nightmare First, if this one was a bit more scary or played more into the time stopped angle, it would probably be past it. But overall, this is a really good one. As for 14 itself, hmm, 14 itself is a bit of a strange one to really rank. Hmm. Yeah, definitely a, definitely high A tier. I would put it right between these two, yeah. And now that we've got all that out of the way, let's move on to the next segment. Moving on, we have what I like to consider the Middle Ages, episodes 15 through 20. Much like the Bronze Age, there are some solid episodes and some meh, but this time, there's a whole lot more meh. Starting off, we have the Ned Zone from Trios of Horror 15. The Ned Zone is actually a pretty interesting idea, Ned being an angel of death that can predict anything. I do like the beginning where it shows off both Mole Man and Dr. Hibbert, and the stuff with Homer is an interesting climax, but however, I feel like if they focus more on the different kinds of deaths, it would be more interesting. And also, I feel like the ending is kind of all over the place with the whole uh, garage thing. But in the end, I'd still say it's a really solid. A tier, right below Dr. Hipper. Four beheadings and a funeral. Probably the most recognizable thing about this is the very, very phony British accents that I'm pretty sure any kind of British person would just cringe at. Otherwise, it's, it's an all right mystery, but it didn't really do anything for me. 
C tier. Final one for 14, in the belly of the boss. To be perfectly honest, I don't really like this episode very much. The body humor is alright-ish, but everything else doesn't really mean to me that much. And the ending is just gross, but I guess I can see what they're looking for. Honestly, yeah, D. D tier. Not as bad as Italy Diddly, but you know. For 14, yeah, this one is not too great. Uh, definitely a C tier. Definitely the weakest one, honestly. And also, this is a tiny thing to mention, this is the first time where they start doing their own little posters for each of the things here. But anyways, Jurassic of Horror number 16. I'll, uh, I'll be honest, just saying this out loud, Jurassic of Horror 16 is a very much biased opinion for me. Yeah, this is definitely the first of the Trias of Horrors I ever watched, mainly because my dad had it on his iPod, and this is probably one of the first ones I ever saw, even though I have no idea for any of these segments what they were originally based on. Nowadays, I can definitely appreciate them more, such as B.I. Bartificial Intelligence. Bartful- Bartful- no, no, no. Bartificial Intelligence is a really solid parody of the original AI, probably better than the original, not gonna lie. And it has a lot of solid jokes. For me, yeah, it's definitely an A tier. Really up there. Spyfall of the Fattest, another one that I personally consider a guilty pleasure, taking place on a hunting reserve that Mr. Burns knows, and the prey are the characters. It is really interesting seeing them all go at it with different kinds of deaths, as well as the different ways Mr. Burns hunts them down. It's a really solid one in my opinion. Definitely B tier. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, higher than that. If anything, eh, yeah. Uh, neither the dolphins going down. And finally, I've grown a costume to my- co I've grown a costume onto- I've grown a costume on your face. That's what it is. Uh, one based off the Twilight Zone. We haven't actually got one of those in a while now. Based on the one where they all transform into the mask they're wearing, this one goes a step further, going over whole costumes such as Spider-Man, Werewolf, and Jared from the subway ads. That joke did not age well. B tier. So yeah, Trees of Horror 16, I'll honestly consider it a guilty pleasure and I'll defend it day and night. It's not perfect by any means, but definitely a solid time. B tier. Also, I gotta admit, knowing now why the Treehouse of Horrors are delayed because of baseball, and now knowing that Treehouse number 34 will also be delayed to November, that just makes me appreciate that joke a lot more. Now, let's move over to Treehouse of Horror number 17. Yes, 17. Treehouse of Horror number 17 is a bit of a mixed bag in my opinion. Some I like, some I don't like, but for me, Married to the Blob, I actually really like this one. I wouldn't say it's definitely an S tier, but definitely high A tier. I think it's the idea that it plays with the whole Pat Homer thing, will only take it to an extreme. And some of the jokes here, like the Dr. Phil segment at the horrible, horrible Oktoberfest and the homeless shelter jokes, I definitely say this is definitely worth it. A tier. You know what? Sending the phones is going a bit down. Right, right there. Next one. You gotta know when to go along. Maybe it's because I'm not Jewish, but this one just doesn't appeal to me, to be honest. Mainly because it's a lot of Jewish jokes. Jewish jokes. Hi, look at the funny Jewish jokes. Frankly, it kind of just goes into circles until eventually they make a second golem and they get married. Honestly, there's nothing really bad for it. I guess it's just not for me, personally. Definitely high C tier. And the more I think about it, yeah, WizKids is go also going to C tier. Ay ay ay, this is getting... Oh, I need to... I'm gonna need to readjust this again soon. <clears throat> but for now, the day that the Earth stood stu The day that the Earth looked stupid. <clears throat> this is a pretty underrated one in my opinion. Playing to the paranoia of the War of the Worlds podcast, as well as the jokes that come when the alien invasion actually begins. And frankly, maybe I'm just easy to please, but maybe looking at all of the players going as different animals, this is definitely a high one for me. Yeah, I'd say this is an A tier. Uh, not as high as the others, but yeah, that's a good spot. And speaking of which, let's move on to the Grand game. This one hmm, has some. It has some highs, but also has a low in it. Hmm. Honestly, eh, I had a good time. Low A tier. And nope. All right. Now we're. Hang on, let me just fix this up real quick. I should have done that before. Well, this is really cool. This is high quality content right here. All right. Now. Trias of Horror number 18, starting with E.T. Go Home, another solid Kang and Kodos one. Firstly, right, me, on second thought, I probably wouldn't say this is solid. I wouldn't say it was bad either, but I just don't really care for this one. I've seen the original E.T., I can definitely see where they're going with for the parody, but I guess for me, it's not really what I'm looking for. 
Actually, no. B tier. Right below Genesis Tub. Next one. Mr. and Ms. Simpson. Actually, yo, let's do this. Yeah, that's better. Mr. and Ms. Simpson. You watch this for one thing and one thing only. The epic choreographed fight scene between Mr. and Ms. Simpson. It's really good, and I also really like the sniper scene where they fight up above on a skyscraper. And frankly, I don't think there's be anything else that's really noteworthy. But with a second of this, I think that's all you need in the Prince King things. I would say... A tier. Why the hell not? Uh, let's put it... Yeah, right here. Mr. Ms. Simpson. Actually, no, uh, B tier. B tier. B tier zone. Now, on to Heck House, where Ned Flanders goes into his ultimate devil form and shows off what truly happens to sinners out there. The first part of the beginning is also pretty solid, with all the different tricks that just escalate, maybe a little too much. And frankly, I'd say there's a lot of solid jokes, like the OG uh, Heck House that Ned tries to build, and as well as the all the new stuff that they add once Ned comes into this whole demon form. Honestly, high B. Hi, B. And moving on from that, let's move on to our handy dandy uh, tier list for the episodes overall. This one, I'd say, it definitely has some high highs. Hi, B tier. Hi, B tier sounds alright. Yeah, yeah. And now for number 19, we start getting into more of the stupid era, but that's not a point in history, so we can't really call it that. With Untitled Robot Parody, which is a parody of Transformers than Michael Bay ones. And while there are some jokes about the robots transforming into everyday objects that I do like, overall this just definitely didn't do it for me. And I feel like it definitely didn't do it for everyone else too. Uh, yeah, C tier. C tier, I don't really care for it. How to get ahead in Deadvertising. I don't get this one to be honest. It starts off with a weirdly, oddly accurate Mad Men introduction, and then after that it does its own thing doing a brutal murder of Krusty, and following up with other creative deaths involving celebrities, and then said celebrities come back to life. This is kind of all over the place, really, but I wouldn't say I necessarily hate it. C tier, and also, somebody, somebody please try to inform me, why are there so many gay jokes about Abraham Lincoln? Was, was that like a thing in the past? <laughs> But that's besides the point. What isn't beside the point is the Grand Pumpkin Mill House. S tier. Honestly, yeah. I know that a lot of people don't really care for this one in particular, but for me, I think I really liked it. Because sure that there is the whole cliche, Woo, cute cartoon turns evil. Woo! But this is why I feel like it does right, because it pays a solid tribute to the original series, using the same kind of backgrounds they use, using the same kind of dynamics and characters, and frankly, I feel like the pumpkin is just hilarious. The pumpkin segregation, and the whole dramaticness of it, it really is a good time. S tier. Actually, call me crazy? Yeah, I'd say this is... Actually, yeah, I'd say this is a really good segment. Let's move on to the main course itself, the actual episode in its entirety. I'd give it... Hmm, it had a high high with Pumpkin, low low with Transformers, middle part with the Dead Potential. I'd say B tier, right in the smack, uh, smack down of B tier. Oh yeah, 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 it's the one where they all vote and stuff. Uh, that's pretty funny. Again, I feel like it would be funnier if I knew US politics, but what you gonna do? Let's move on to number 20, where the start of the HD Simpsons comes into play, starting with Dial M for Murder, <clears throat> Dial M for Murder, and press pound to return to main menu. That is another long couple of the title, but I got it this time. This segment here is apparently based off a specific Hitchcock film, but frankly, it feels like it takes elements from a lot of different Hitchcock films, and they all do it pretty excellently. I like how they do the, all the camera tricks that Hitchcock is known for, as well as keeping it as stylistically in his style. That doesn't make sense, but you get what I mean right here. High A tier, actually. I'd say put it right below Z for Zombies. <clears throat> Up next, Don't Have a Cow, Mankind. A good old classic zombie one. 
one specifically bought based off 28 Days Later, but also does its own thing. It does its own thing, it's really good at it. And there's a lot of solid jokes in here. From Wolf Castle being a Terminator-style character who was immediately killed, Apu bringing out his own super motorized vehicle, follow that up by the follow that up by immediately abandoning him once the opportunity arises, and of course, of course, Homer had to be one of the zombies in the end. I give this one, yeah, another A tier. A really, really solid season. And finally, there's no business like Mo business. This one is somewhat unique, being based off a musical of Sweeney Todd, but at the same time, it's questionable since they don't really follow the story of Sweeney Todd all of that well, more so playing with the idea of a musical. And playing in the idea of a musical, it's actually a really cool idea, throwing out a lot of fun set pieces, some neat songs, and really cool stage props that bring in the whole stage prop vibe. I give this one, yeah, A. Actually, nah, yeah, B tier. B tier sounds right. And now, moving on to our good old friend, the episode tier list. This one is really, this one is overall really good. High A tier. Yeah, the opening segment with all the different monsters coming to life, just here as popular characters, then the wives coming in, a little tab it over the place, but I see what they're doing. I like it. So, do you think I've been too positive? Well, let's move on to the Dark Age. Not only do these easily have some of the worst of the worst, but it's where a majority of the modern Simpsons criticism stems from. And overall, it's the most plentiful Treehouses episode 21 to 30. Hoo boy! Starting off with War and Pieces, a uh, board game one, slightly based off Jumanji, where board games come to life and they're evil. Honestly, what more can you say about that? They do a couple of solid board game jokes here and there, but frankly, this isn't Halloween. This is a hypothetical, like a what if scenario. C tier. Up next, Master and Catabeer. This one, I feel like I might enjoy more if I see the original film, but for me right now, I feel like this is kind of just all over the place. They think he did it. He didn't do it. They try to kill him. Oh no, they don't want to kill him. Oh no, they do kill him. And oh no, Marge dies. This is kind of just all over the place with alignments here, and Homer just, why are you so violent all of a sudden? Again, C tier, right before gold. And finally, Tween Light. Tween Light is based off Twilight, however, as someone who unfortunately seen Twilight, I don't think they really watched it, other than the first 20 minutes, but frankly, well frankly, compared to these two, they're pretty good. More so basing on vampires as a whole, rather than the whole thing about Oats, uh, Twilight. Definitely not an A tier, no 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 no, uh, yeah, low, low B tier for sure. It's alright compared to the other ones, but I guess that isn't really saying much. Overall, yeah, this one's definitely going in... S no, I wouldn't say it's bad enough to be in D tier. We need, like, at least two, uh, bat two D tier, or one D and one F to make it into a D tier category. Now then, let's move on to Treehouse of Horror number 22. And frankly, I'm sorry, it's not gonna get any better from here. Diamond Bell and the Butterball, F tier. <laughs> F tier, if anyone's seen it, I don't think anyone will really argue with me. How do you make a drama film about being paralyzed, and have a Spider-Man segment, and have farts, and the most you can say about it is that it's boring? <laughs> it is not scary. It is not entertaining. I get nothing. Thing from this segment alone, it just baffles me, honestly. Definitely our first F tier, and definitely one of the worst ones, because farts just over and over. Don't like it the first time, not gonna like it the second, third, or fifth time they do the joke. And the Spider-Man thing, I think it's funny that they do turn off the dark as a reference of all things, but frankly, it's just too little too late. D for diddly. C tier. Basically, Ned kills people, this time intentionally as a voice of God speaks to him, which is really Homer. The last bit is a bit funny, where God himself strangles Homer, and turns out Bond is with the devil himself. It just... if it wasn't for that ending segment, I'd put it in D, but because of that... Yeah, C tier's alright. And finally, for this really not good one, we have In the Navi. 
In the Navi, based off Avatar, kinda plays into the aliens King Kodos, but also kinda plays into Avatar's whole world and stuff. Maybe I just need to see Avatar again, but this is actually a bit more funnier than I remember. I wouldn't say definitely 9A, and frankly, yeah, I'd definitely say Genesis Tunnel is better than all of these, but actually, no, C tier. C tier. This is just all kinds of meh. And so, overall, ladies, gentlemen, people of any or no gender, we have our first D tier. Probably not gonna be the last one on here, and we still got that elusive F right here that we have to take care of. But for now, let's go over Treehouse of Horror number 23. I'd probably say number 23 is probably the least scariest out of all of them. Starting with the greatest story ever hold. Holy moly. This is probably the most I remember, that stupid pun I made. I feel like it would benefit more if more people joked around throwing stuff in the hole, but it gets too big before we really get to say any really funny things going into it. What was that? B tier? No. C tier? Yes. Unnormal activity. One actually based off a horror property. In this area? Oh my god. Oh, so bold of you. Three House of Horror. Unknown activity. I've seen the first Primal Activity. I've seen Ghost Dimension. But overall, I definitely feel like there's a solid premise to this one. And I feel that there is a few good jokes here and there. Eh, yeah. I'd say B's good. Finally, Bart and Homer's Excellent Adventure. So, plot twist, maybe I haven't seen all of Classic Simpsons, so I don't know the specific context behind this one episode, the one episode that fans adore, but frankly, it's pretty cool that they go back to play out with this setting, and of course, Artie Sip had to come in to humor his way into the plot. If I watched the whole show, maybe it would be in B, but because I haven't, C, as it stands, eh. Yeah. Okay, maybe it's not that gross, but still just kind of bleh. And that's why I have to rank this a bleh C tier. Honestly, probably the thing I remember most, and probably the best part, was the terrifyingly brutal uh, Mayan gods coming out to destroy the world. But overall, yeah, intro was the best part, no questions about it. Oh yeah, speaking of the intro being the best part, Speed got Trios of Horror number 24. I'm pretty sure you all know why you re remember Treehouse of Horror number 24, but for right now, oh, the places you'll do. This one, I'd say it's a guilty pleasure. This one plays around with the idea of an evil Dr. Seuss. Now, I know what you're thinking, and yeah, I kind of criticized the same idea before about, ooh, spooky cartoon for kids, now spooky for adults, woo! But this time, I definitely say it works more to its advantage, because they entirely base it off the premise and the rules that set up by Dr. Seuss, using all lyrical rhymes, all the different wacky ways that the crimes get executed. I definitely say that you could do a lot worse with a scary Dr. Seuss. And frankly, I'd say with this kind of cringy topic, this is the best that they could do. And up next, we have Dead and Shoulders. To think, when I was first watching this, and a few times, not until like a couple years ago, I thought Bart was uh, unappropriately punished here. But I mean, come on, what did you think was gonna happen? Bart, you stupid, stupid idiot. I have no idea why I thought you were, but no, no, I I'm getting ahead of myself here. Fact is, sure, Bart's an idiot, and frankly, he's getting what he deserves. And frankly, if it was a bit more funny, and if the ending was maybe more chaotic, or maybe more concrete, I feel like it would probably rank it higher, maybe high B tier. But as it stands now, Dead and Shoulders is low B. Up next, Freaks No Geeks. Freaks No Geeks is a really weird segment, based off the 1930s carnivals and circuses. This is a case where I feel like a lot of the weird out there jokes are they're probably better than the whole overall plot itself. Everything from the Rolling Barney to the Kang and Kodos to a lot of the other circus uh, features, I'd say it's all pretty funny in my opinion. And the ending, yeah, I actually thought it was pretty terrifying, but then they kind of just ruined it for me with the How I Met Your Mother and the final results. I mean, it would be brutal at first, but I feel like they play too much off as a joke here. Uh... Zeke Zena, yeah, right there. That's a good one. Here we go. Number 24. If you've seen episode 24, or at least remember 24, you know why you remember 24. Not for any of the segments. No, 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 no. 
the very highly detailed, highly graphic uh, intro segment that recreates the entire series involving countless movie references done by Gamel Gel Gelmir Del Toro himself. And frankly, if he had the pull, if he had the time to direct all of them, it'd probably be an S tier. But for now, that's a good spot for it. Up next, number 25. Number 25. I'd probably say is a is a glowing good spot in all of this meh in the middle here. So frankly, School as Hell, I'd say is a really good one. Definitely not an S tier. Hmm. I also put a stupid one a bit higher. Uh, right here, yeah. School as Hell is a really solid one involving Bar actually succeeding in school, a school for devils. Probably the thing that I remember most is that, oddly enough, it mixes gore and all the different ideas together in an oddly really good way. And I like how it mixes both gore and a bit of wholesomeness in the end. Definite A tier on my opinion. Actually, Hex and City going down. Up next, we got a Clockwork Yellow based off a of Clockwork Orange. Again, another movie I gotta see. Some jokes of it appeal to me, other it don't. I feel like I should definitely watch it because I know some of the scenes, I know some of the stuff that happens, so I feel like it would definitely benefit more. Funny enough, they actually did reference Clockwork Orange in two other segments, not in terms of being Clockwork Orange specifically, but rather as the main character guy, B tier. And finally, we have the others. You all remember this, and frankly, what the frick is this? What is this? Oh yeah, the Tracy Ullman gang's back. I feel like there's a little bit too much of the whole referential humor with the with the classics, but <clears throat> overall, I wouldn't say it's bad. I feel like they definitely should have played more with the kids' deaths. Maggie's death is an exception. I like how it's just like, uh-oh, run, 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 run! There is a bit of wholesomeness at the end, but hmm, I don't know, I feel like it doesn't have the same effect here. But, and finally, there's a final cameo by the man stuck in the eternal purgatory. I feel like they should have had a lot more for him to say, though, because otherwise it's just kind of there. More to say, hey, look at this guy. And frankly, I feel like that sums it up pretty well. Just, hey, look at this. Hey, look at that. You could say that about a few segments I'll say later, but this one probably has my least favorite execution. And actually, you know what? Seeking Xena, others going down to seat. And so, number 25. Wait a minute. Okay, I've come back. I finally learned how to count. I did do Treehouse of the War number 25. But anyways, I think I've delayed it long enough. Treehouse of number 26. F tier. If I ever talk to you about Simpsons, you would know Treehouse of Horror number 26. By far my least favorite Treehouse of Horror out of all of them. And possibly till later on. Easy, easy F tier. I don't like this segment. It is disgusting. It is not funny. And frankly, when they start doing more comical deaths, it's far too late. I've lost interest. I don't like how they take a 10-year-old boy, no matter how bad he is, no matter how much of a psychopath Saisha Bob is, it's just unsettling. It's disgusting. And playing with his body like that, just, ew, dude, why? And speaking of things that I do not like, add or below, Zed tier. The worst of the actual worst, Homerzilla. You ever want a segment where they just laugh at your source material? You ever want a segment where they completely stop halfway through and just focus on a completely unfunny side quest involving billionaires and self products? This is Homerzilla for you, where they focus on the whole cliche and funniness of Godzilla, and then they just kind of stop. Hang on, we've insulted the material a lot enough let's insult it harder let's make it a movie franchise where we just completely break immersion and break the spirit of godzilla just so we can rant about billionaires rebooting franchises i mean you could have done it about freaking anything any sort of modern thing here because i know i don't think any writer would have found this funny except for venting about his stupid boss and frankly i'm just more angry just thinking about it because Godzilla, one of the longest running and most popular characters in all of fiction, and you just turn it into a freaking joke. I mean, come on, you've made stuff based off the ghost dad, 
Transformers, Sherlock Holmes, King Kong, you made one about a kaiju already, and you just, uh, Zed tier, without a question, worst of the worst of the worst. Congratulations, we found the worst. Okay, I'm I'm calm now, I'm calm. I've done I've done my tamper tantrum. Telepath's the glory is bleh. Honestly, I I honestly don't care. I never seen the movie, but telekinesis is cool. I mean, some of the things Jesus does is alright. Billhouse going nuts is kind of uh, it's over before it can even start. And the Maggie stuff is well, it's Maggie stuff. It's cute, it's there. I Ah, it's, I mean, you can't go wrong with that, I guess. But still, not scared. I'm not invested. C tier. Like I said before, no one, no one I don't think will ever argue with me that Cheers of Horror 26 is the worst of the worst. There was also that intro segment with a really cursed 3D mask and done by famed artist that I can't remember the name of. John Crickful Lucy. I mean, I get he has an original style, he plays with it a lot, but frankly, it doesn't really appeal to me. I do like all the rhymes and the despicable way they describe the monsters, and frankly, right now, I'm just glad that we can get the worst of the worst of the worst out of the way. Let's move on to our very own sponsor, Halloween of Horror. What's funny about this is that this is a full episode taking place on Halloween. And funny enough, they actually do a gay where they talk about a hypothetical trias of horror, and frankly, I think I would prefer that over what we got. Alright, that'll be the last I say how bad and how I don't like Trails of Horror number 26. Halloween of Horror! I actually really like this one. A lot of people consider it a guilty pleasure amongst modern Simpsons episodes. It plays along with Lisa's fear, as well as Bart and Marge going trick-or-treating, and as well as overall how the town reacts to Halloween. There are some genuine scares with these weird teenage strangers that try and go after them, and overall, I'd say it's really good that we actually get a whole episode that takes place on Halloween, rather than limiting it to this just one sec. I'd say Halloween of Horror as a whole episode, I hate you. But now, we move on to Trias of Horror episode number 27, aka the Treehouse of Horror, which sparked the 600th episode of The Simpsons. You'd think that they would do something really outstandish, really out there, just so they can show off how far they come. Not really. Try hard. Mix 16, Hunger Games, and Mad Max. Do they do one? They kinda do both. Both not in a really great way either. I... Hmm. I wouldn't say it's offensively bad, but to be honest, there isn't really much I can remember about this. Hell, the most I remember is, hey look, that's Axel from Twisted Metal. D tier. I don't really like it. BFF R.I.P. This is actually a really good one. Probably one of the best new ones in a while. BFF R.I.P. plays with an imaginary friend that kills people that Lisa had. It goes a lot of ways with it, and it's really fun seeing all the different ways it can go, as well as playing with the idea of imagination. And frankly, in this house, we stand Sergeant Sausage. The A tier. Mo Finger. Mo Finger is basically a spy movie. It proclaims to be Kingsman, but not really. I'd say it has more with a Bond movie than anything. And frankly, I feel like it plays with the right amount of cheesiness that this kind of film would go for. Overall, I give it. Yeah, definitely a C tier. So overall, ranking it, I don't think it ain't is really bad enough to be a D tier, honestly. I feel like overall, this is just more disappointing than anything, because come on, 600 episodes, and the most you do is a mismanaged, mismanaged segment, a pretty good segment, followed up by an unclear parody. I mean, come on, 600, you gotta do better to take care of your franchise, man. That's all out of the way. Let's move on. Let's move on to 27 for real this time. I learned how to count exorcist. Probably one of the first segments where Maggie plays a major role as a possessed devil with, a, a, with Pazuzu. Again, I feel like I'd love it more if I would seen The Conjuring, but now that I've actually seen just the segment itself, I like it. I would say that the whole crucifixion stuff isn't as funny, more so the stuff leading up to it, from the terrifying songs to all the stuff that leads up and end of it is probably the best, but frankly, I can't really complain. Easier, I guess? Poor Lisa. Hmm. This is- okay. 
This is a movie I have seen. I love Coraline. I watch it every Halloween. I watch it even if it's not Halloween, because that's the kind of guy I am. I mean, one thing to note is that this plays more into the idea of Coraline rather than following the actual story of Coraline. With all the different people going to the new realm, and frankly, I don't care if this is a stylistic choice, these models look cursed. And the ending kinda just teeter tires over the place and doesn't really resolve anything, but I can't say I really hate it either. C tier. And now we get into what is sometimes considered the worst of the worst, as in the grossest of the gross. And what I consider pretty gross for a long time too, mmm, over. It's based off the old poem written by Stephen King called Survivor Type. Survivor Type is where a guy eats himself. Except because of the cartoon, Homer can take it a whole lot further. And frankly, it could be a whole lot grosser than it actually is. But thankfully, as it doesn't show so much blood, and frankly, if all the different creative ways they do it rather than just cut it off and eat it, I feel like this gives it a little bit of a pass. It definitely isn't for everyone though. I could definitely see people getting utterly grossed out. Insane. Middle C tier, honestly. And yeah, I would overall rank this. Yeah, Middle C is overall why I've described this, honestly. And to Treehouse of Horror number 29. Treehouse of Horror number 29. Starting with the invasion of the Potty Snatchers. You like iPod jokes? To be honest, people do. Then they tell the joke, then they have no other joke, and that's it. Oh, people are always on the phones. Oh, they miss out on what's going on in the real world. I feel like there's definitely some good stuff with all the different ways that people get infected with the pods, but overall, I feel like they kinda just feel like they kinda just don't focus on it too much. And the ending segment is just kinda bleh, honestly. I'm saying bleh and meh a whole lot in this episode. I gotta come up with more words to use. Yeah, low C tier. Up next, we got Multiplicity. Honestly, I remember hating this one a lot more than I probably reasonably should. A parody is split, and again, standard usual, jokes didn't work for me, and the second half is definitely better than the first half. And overall, I'd say the Duffman joke is freaking hilarious, but otherwise, I guess it's just not for me. Yeah, F tier, I don't like this. And finally, Geriatric Park. Middle B tier, really? Middle B tier seems correct for me. There are some jokes I definitely like, with some of the jokes about the old people, and the co credit hog segment that I actually, I always laugh out loud at. I feel like the ending doesn't really do the whole thing justice, but overall, I wouldn't say it's necessarily bad. So, Trias of Horror number 29? B tier, I guess? And finally, we're out of this rut. I've been talking for well over 22 minutes. He saw these 10 episodes alone, and frankly, I don't like them, and I don't think they're going to get any better. And I know right now, nothing will get past the B tier. You know, this tier list is weird. It put the prologue in this tier list, which is really weird. Honestly, it's alright, I guess. Like, it's funny how this is the second segment, the Demon, ba the demon Baby Maggie. And also, hey, 666, it fits. I kinda wish they also played the XXX of 30 with their symbols, but Simpsons is not fun. And speaking of no fun, Danger Things. F tier. Have you ever watched Stranger Things? If you haven't, this segment is probably a C tier. But because I have seen Stranger Things, this is not Stranger Things. This is as much Stranger Things as somebody just flipping onto the 80s and just saying, hey, that's Stranger Things. I mean, it has setups and it has the different characters dressed up as Stranger Things characters. This is not Stranger Things because it doesn't have the emotion, the context, or even the same story beats as the original Stranger Things. Rather just like, hey, that happens in Stranger Things. It's happening here, and it just doesn't work, no matter what. Up next, we have Heaven Swipes Right. And is it just me, or did the original episode actually use Comic Sans for its own title screen? Heaven Swipes Right, and I could sum it up as this. Cold Chokes on Wiener, he can't die yet, so it goes back in new different bodies. It, it plays around with this segment a lot, but I don't know why. I just don't care for what's going on here. Maybe it's because I'm dumb because I've seen so much bleh. 
but I just really don't care on what's going on here. Definite C tier. I feel like if they play this have more major characters, I would care, or if they did something more crazy or ecstatic, I would. I mean, hell, I practically had to watch this a bit earlier just to get an idea of what the segment is like, so I should probably speak with you. And finally, when Harry met Slimey on your trademark Kang and Kodos event, where this time it's about Kang meeting up with Selma. I haven't watched Shape of Water, and but I debate whether or not that or this movie would be grosser. I don't know how I really feel about it. I wouldn't say it's necessarily bad. Hell, I feel like it's honestly, yeah, I'm putting it in middle. I'm putting it at the very bottom of B tier. I don't know what it is, I just can't seem to hate it. There wasn't any jokes that really caught my attention, but nothing that made me groan or just made me feel bored. So overall, I want to give it also low C tier. Actually, you know what, this appointment's getting to me. D tier. Actually, eh, yeah, sure. My disappointment is immeasurable, and my day is ruined. But thankfully, my day will finally have a happy ending, because we're out. We're out of the rut, and thankfully, we've only got one, two, three, four. Thank God. And frankly, they're probably some of the best that Mario Simpsons has to offer. And finally, Renaissance Age, which I tend to call it. Where they got their crap together, and started making actually really good segments again. And while there are some that don't do it for me, that's an obvious, I can over say, this is a much bigger improvement after the last whopping 10 seasons of not good, not good, don't like, really don't like. Starting off with a bit of an unorthodox method, let's start with the Thanksgiving horror. Let's start off with a gobble, a gobble yet, a gobble with it. I don't know how to pronounce that name, but overall, it is basically what it says in the tin. Turkey version of characters being shot, killed, and brutally gaining revenge against the evil, evil pilgrims. I feel like there is honestly a little bit too much goblin for my taste, to be honest. And actually, this one's going down. But frankly, I can't really complain about this. Middle B. Yeah. Here we have the fourth Tuesday after tomorrow. Honestly, with how much it paralleled Twilight Zone, I'm surprised it took us this long to get a Black Mirror segment. Playing off with the whole evil AI system. I feel like it definitely plays a lot into it really well. Granted, some of it definitely plays more into the science fiction aspect of it, but there are some things I really like, such as the final segment with the heartbeat, the whole collection about how to bake the perfect meal and doing even better than the original. I'd say this is definitely a really solid homage to this new series. E2 as well. And finally, we have the last Thanksgiving. Probably say it on this. Easier actually. Playing off the whole evil alien side, which oddly enough, I don't think I really played into this aspect where it's a giant creature that takes over an alien spaceship. I would say that probably the best part is that, fun fact, this is Russell Taylor's last performance and her final segment as Mari, it's actually really chilling and actually really good. I mean, I know I'm gonna get demonetized, but take a listen. That alone shoots it up into B tier, but with all the really solid alien horror aspect of it, I'd say it definitely makes its fun to be easier. Right here, I give us another A. What about here? Here's a good spot for it. And also, this one's going way higher up. I have no idea what it was doing so far back. As you can tell, I've been doing this for too long, I've watched too many of these, my brain is starting to melt. But at the very least, I have conscious enough to do the last ones starting with Treehouse of Horror number 31. Starting off with Toy Gory. Finally, they perfected Simpsons in 3D, and frankly, well, and frankly, all the jokes here kind of hit the bullseye for me. Maybe because, yeah, I'm a big sucker for Toy Story franchise as a whole, and Pixar in general, but I'd say this is actually a really good homage, and plays around with the concept really well, and yes, Bart is totally the sit in this situation, and frankly, that ending is just brutal, funny, and tragic in the best possible ways. And it's kind of weird that uh, this is the most emotion Bart has seen in all of these shorts. Easy, easy A tier. I swear to god, once it's finally complete, I'm gonna have to just switch everything around because when you just add to the tier list, more and more things change. But I will say, I don't think any changes are gonna be made to this one. It's a home, of course. 
Spider-Verse, I love Spider-Verse. This one I don't love. In fact, I can't really say I hate it, no, no. It's not funny or any way, just more so there. Honestly, a bunch of the jokes don't really land for me. The whole Spider-Verse anymore is just an excuse just to bring out random, haha, <laughs> look at all these random different homers, D-tier. And if anything, eh, while I'm doing this, D-tier, 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 and D-tier. Well, now we've got that all of our way, let's go with B9 Rewind, based off what I think is Russian Doll, which essentially think Groundhog Day, but horror, but not that kind of horror. This kind of horror, where you have to just carefully follow an exact plan each and every day. I do like the twist at the end, that in the end it's all Frank's fault, and frankly, all the deaths, I wouldn't say it's nearly as bad as Wanted Dead Than Alive, yeah, I'd say B tier. So overall, three ones that we got, we got a really solid one, really in one, and a, oh, and a one in B tier. You know where that leads us? Right, yeah, right here. And now, let's move on to Trios of Horror number 32. Oh, you thought this was a renaissance? Oh, whoops, sorry. I thought we were here in the Dark Ages again. Barty, an intro segment which doesn't really appeal to me all that much. I mean, we did the good stuff with the toy gory with the whole Disney parody, but this one, no, no. Actually, yeah, F2. I really don't care for this one. Bon John Ho is this side of Parasite. This side of Parasite. I actually really like Parasite. I've seen it before a whole bunch of times, and frankly, it's actually pretty faithful to the original. Okay, the ending is kind of all over the place and kind of ruins it a little bit for me. I can't say I really hate it either. I give it credit for what it's worth. Top of C tier. Nightmare on Elch. Nightmare on Elm Tree. F tier. F tier. This is without a doubt the stupidest, unfunniest, okay, maybe not unfunniest, but stupidest, most laughably bad concept. -y. Ooh, spooky trees coming to life. Ooh. Oh, look at, look at them go. Look at them kill things. Just doesn't do it for me. A lot of the jokes involving just plants or trees together, it just doesn't really work for me. And it's not even scary because it's just trees. It's not funny. It's not scary. I kind of wish I was watching something else. Something like Telltale Heart. Why can't this be a whole segment? Why can't it be in this beautifully animated art style? Why the Homer wanted this whole segment to be rushed? Why they miss out on the final December? This annoys me far more than it reasonably should. If it did, if it honest to god did have the entire thing unaltered, I would probably put it in S tier. But for right now, A tier, because like, hell, even if it was just any kind of weird story, it'd still be a better percent of time than Nightmare on Elm Tree. And finally, we have the last one, which counted as the ending for my original one, Dead Right Now. Covering Ring and TikTok in general. I feel like they should have leaned more into the kids dying to the whole evil TikTok thing. And I also, but I will say, I do like the aspect that, hey, Grandpa has nothing left to live for, and it actually lasts longer than when he's originally going to go. And oh yeah, the ending, it just, I don't know how I feel about the ending. It's kind of just sad, really, but also kind of the character. B tier. Yeah, I know I just said we're entering the Renaissance, but frankly, no, 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 no. This, this one right here just proves that Sim Marge Simpson's 30 onward still has its criticisms. But at the very least, now we can somewhat end it all with the newest and frankly, all of these rock. Starting with Not It, basing it on its chapter one and two. It's a really solid adaptation of the original story, and frankly, it really benefits from being an entire episode's length rather than being crammed into one little segment. Convoy Dad being the kid's father is just cursed, and the fact that they have completely conflicting personalities. I'd say this is a really solid entry in the series. Some of the stuff as the older adults doesn't really get to me. Not in terms of not in terms of fear or comedy, but overall, I wouldn't say it's necessarily bad or anything like remotely B-tier. Now this, I'd say this is an A. And now let's actually get into this. Let's actually get into 33, the Puka Duke. 
The Puka Duke is based off the of Babadook, one of the few horror movies that I'm brave enough to see. And comparing that to the original, wow, it's actually really good. And frankly, it's a little bit terrifying. And while well, a lot of people say that March's voice has gone down the drain, it actually kind of fits in this scenario and plays into the demonic aspect in a terrifyingly chilling way. And this is probably the first time I've actually felt just the tiniest twinge of fear in a two house of horror set. Really solid stuff. Honestly, S tier. Something past season 20 that I've made it all the way up to S tier. Who would have thunk? Here we have our penultimate set, Death Tone. Death Tone is based off Death Note, which I have not seen. However, watching with my sister, who has seen, she said it's very different, but also very good. She liked all the jokes that came out of it. Too. Like the jokes that come out of all the different three of deaths that they come up with. I definitely know that in the Death Note series that, that you can die the same way twice, so it's pretty interesting that they bring out that new idea out, which benefits it. I feel like the ending segment, however, is a little bit rushed with the introduction of El Barto, as well as the death of the Shibigami and the transformation into a Shibigami, but overall, I cannot break. Overall, I cannot say I hate this by any quite any means whatsoever. Also A tier. Now this is and finally, let's end it off with Simpsons World. Based off a show that I haven't seen, but watching this, show that I haven't seen, but watching this, I actually wanna see it now. While some people would consider this lazy, heck, in some contexts, I would consider this lazy. But they go all out with this idea and play into practically every aspect of classic Simpsons. With all the different weapons they use, all the different jokes in the background, it's a lot of fun and pretty interesting. I don't know what it means by Australian superfans, but I cannot get their oys out of my head. I don't know why. I give this, we can put this all to rest, A tier. And so, we end this off on a pretty high note. We're putting this one in A tier. But wait just a minute. So, turns out, editing all this content together, from gathering footage to ranking and analyzing every single episode, and hey, Trios of Hardware and Number 34 is out. Now I can rank it. <sighs> it's gonna be so good finally being done with all of this. Starting off with Wild Bart's Can't Be Token. A Snowpiercer reference, and also NFTs. I can already tell from the very- I can already just tell from the start. We have a COVID-19, and we have an NFT joke in the start. That <laughs> didn't last- they didn't leave a good impression, but they actually handled both really well. Let's start with Wild Parts. While it start- while it has its usual NFT jokes, I mean, sure they are pretty funny, but I mean, they were thinking back in 2020 and 2021. You're kind of a little bit late to the party, but- as but I guess it's better late than never, I suppose. And this one's actually rocks a lot. It's really spot on with its action and has a whole lot of solid jokes all throughout. Hmm. I mean, I'm gonna give this one an A tier. Uh, right behind, right behind Reaper Banks. Up next, we up next we have eight or a eight eight a eight eight. How do you pronounce that? Why are they a really really solid Silence of the Lambs parody? It's really intense, not gonna lie, with all the different brutal gory mysteries and the really solid ending to it all. And hey, this is probably Sideshow Bob's best role in a while now. I really like this one. What am I doing? The more I think about it, yeah, right from right from the monkey's paw. And finally, the very end of it all, and it ends on COVID-19. Oh boy. We have Lout Break. Based off, according to Wikipedia, at one point it said it's based on COVID-19, but now I'd say it more so plays into Outbreak, a different kind of movie. Strangely enough, this isn't the first time that we've had a whole bunch of homers. Hell, this isn't the first time that they caused mayhem. This isn't even the first time where Homer was straight up narcissistic for himself. This is this is really just weird, and frankly makes me uncomfortable. And like, I don't want to give it a D. And the ending, it kind of just fizzled out. I mean, they start talking about dropping a nuke on the city, and oh, the kids aren't affected and stuff, but then it's just like, ah, you know what, we're out of time. Uh, Ned's a homer now. Uh, Professor Frank's a homer now. Uh, Coral credits. Uh, let's just do a quick montage. The end. A bit of a sad way to fizzle out, not gonna lie. Especially since Simpsons World was the original way out. I'm gonna give this... Tier. Maybe we need a new title for this. I don't think Renaissance really applies to this anymore. And so, 
That's ending the entire thing off. Here's a horror number 34. The one I thought would get away, but ended up not getting away because of time restrictions. This one, hmm, the first two ones were really solid. The third one didn't really appeal to me, but I guess I could see what they were going for. And oh yeah, they kind of just stopped doing intro segments, which is really weird to be honest. And pairing Kodos nowadays, they're just cameos, which is kind of disappointing in all honesty. A lot of really good ones came from them. I'm gonna give it high B. The first two ones really do it for me. And so, that's it. That's 34 individual segments all ranked on a tier list, both in terms of the episode overall and in terms of the segments themselves. If you want a whole complete ranking, look at the tier list. I'll smack it up during the end credits for you. And so, this has all come to an end. If you somehow managed to stick through all the shenanigans and all this blabbering on, thank you. Thank you for sticking with me all throughout this. It was a long, hard effort, but in the end, it was still a lot of fun to do. And now, I'm going to sleep, and I'm never gonna watch a Simpsons episode for months. See you guys later, and don't worry, the new actual gaming video will be up soon.